What is going on everyone? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. And behind me, we have a different backdrop and scenery. This is Harrah's Casino in Cherokee, North Carolina. I'm facing the forest wilderness here in North Carolina and I'm excited. So excited where I actually forgot this feeling of, you know, because I've been playing so much poker and vlogging and being in casinos, like I don't really get nervous before going into casino and starting off a trip. But here, took the two and a half hour flight, just landed a few hours ago and ready to play an $1,100 Tournament. Haven't been in this building ever before and I'm getting nervous and jittery, excited, all of it. Simply because this is a brand new trip. I came down here for a few days just to play some tournaments. And for these next set of videos here, I'm looking forward to how I run and how things go. So today's $1,100 ring event, the two day tournament, and it's gonna be a big one, gonna be a lot of fun. And tomorrow will be the main event. So we'll see how things go today. Wish me some luck. I just got off a plane and I'm ready to play some poker and gamble it up. So wish me some luck. Leave a like for the next few videos because It'll be a lot of fun here from North Carolina. And uh, let's start running up. Let's get a big stack. Starting things off in this $1,100 WSOP tournament, we are in level seven with 30,000 in chips and one of the first hands, eight, nine of diamonds in early position. I put in a raise to $1,800 starting off the action here with a suited connector and multi-way fest. Here it is, cut off button and big blind call. So we're going to a flop, which is pretty darn good. Ace, eight, four, two diamonds. Pretty sick flop to start with lots of equity early on in this tournament. I'm going to be putting money in the middle. I put in a bet of 2,800 and all the other players fold. So overall, it's a good start to this tournament starting to rack in chips. Two hands later, we're in the big blind and there's an early on big stack raised to 2,000. Plus two calls, low jack calls, button calls, and now I peel king queen offsuit to close out the action. I started with a little over 40 big blinds, and this is a hand that has strong card removal against premiums. And look, we're early on, so I'm gonna err on the side of aggression. I think that if I jam, I can get basically everyone to fold and pick up a lot of chips of dead money in the middle. And I'm gonna take the high variance route here and go all in. The ungun player folds quickly, but then I get really quick calls from the early position plus two player and the button whom I have both covered. This can't be a good situation. We're playing a three-way all-in pot here, but the early position player has King Jack. I have him totally dominated. And the button has pocket tens. So I'm just in much better shape than I thought. We're going to a flop, which is unfortunately no good. Then the turn king. Bink City just got to feed a jack and a 10, and we do. King Queen wins, stacks two players early on in this tournament, and... This is what I call a great start right off the bat. So I started with 30,000 in chips, now with 82,000 and the action doesn't stop there. I pick up jacks in plus one and raise it up to 1,800. There's a button player who jams his small stack of about 10,000 total. And then the small blind decides on cold calling. Really weird spot as he's out of position and this player has a much bigger stack than me. Now, when action's back onto me, what? should I do? Is this small blind player ever calling light in this spot? I am not sure. I'm new to the table here, but I want to isolate the small stack who's all in. I think jacks are a pretty good hand and it definitely plays better heads up. So I decided to put in a four bet, another re-raise in size to 23,000, sizing a little bit smaller here. But for 23,000, this guy doesn't care. He makes the call. So we've got a pretty big pot brewing. We're going to a flop three ways, one all in to king nine five two spades. Not really the best flop for me to be honest, but when this player checks it over to me, I'm happy to just see another turn. Card over my pair against this player certainly isn't great, but the turn is the jack of spades. Bink. Now I'm just obviously committing stacks. I don't care what the runout is. And even better, this player bets out 15,000. Such a super small amount. And you already know, hitting a set here, I am just trying to get everything in the middle. With about 64,000 in my stack, I think going all in seems just a little too big. So I decide to price him in, set up a river all in here, and I just raised to a smaller amount to 45,000. Now this player goes deep into the tank. And when he thinks about it for so long, it's pretty clear my set is ahead. I just want him to make the call with a king, maybe ace king or whatever, but he's thinking about it for so long, must have one pair and certainly is in a tough situation here. Ultimately, he ends up on making the call. So boy, 
Big pot really brewing here. Let's win this one here. The river is the seven of clubs. Phew, not a spade. And he decides to lead and just jam. Puts me all in. And you already know I am snap calling this. He shows over, surprisingly, pocket queens. The button had ace 10, so nothing there. But holy crap. Bink a two outer on the turn. Gotta love that one and ran into it. Find a massive, massive hand to win and have a full double up. But there's no time to even admire my chip stack because the next deal, I pick up jacks again. Can't even believe it. Jacks twice in a row. I raise it up to 1,800. Right now, I clearly can't even stack my chips yet after that massive pot. And the button player who I just won the big pot against jams. So we're playing back-to-back -back hands with jacks here. All right, he jams his remaining stack, and it's time to finish him off. I make the call again, and he has ace-five off suit. Just got to fade one of the three aces, please, dealer. But sadly, he hits his ace on the flop, and I don't bink a two-outer twice in a row. He wins. I pay him 15000 in chips. But who cares if I lost that one, honestly? My chip stack's at 165000 just a few minutes into registering. This was a crazy first level of the event, and now I pick up jacks again. Yeah. Jacks three times in a row. Let's do it. There's an only gun open to 2300. I'm next to act in early position here, and I think because of how deep I'm playing right now against my opponent, it merits on just flatting. So I decide on calling, and the small blind calls as well. Three ways to a flop of ace, ace, jack. Damn right. Jack's leading me to tournament glory here, and action surprisingly checks to me. I'm not sure how much value I can get here because I just fold out everyone's nothings, and I want people to pick up some equity. So I check back and see the seven of clubs on the turn. Brings in two flush draws, and the unknown player now bets out 4,000. Delayed continuation bet here, and we're playing super deep. I just gotta get more money in the middle. So definitely opting for a raise with my full house. Hoping he has an ace, hoping he has a draw. I raise it up to 13,000. In hindsight, I should have gone bigger with my sizing, but oh well. As played 13,000 it is. The small blind folds, and the unknown player calls. So... We've got a big pot brewing, and the river is a five. He decides to check it over to me, and this player has about 40,000 in stack. And now, as played by raising this turn, it seems like I only have really good hands or really bad hands in this spot. And because of that dynamic here, I am going to polarize and overbet and go all in. Puts this player all in here, and he takes a long time going over his decision and actually ends up talking out his thought process. He's counting out the hands that he loses to, and he says that I can have ace seven, ace five, pocket jacks, sevens, and pocket fives. And the only clubs that he thinks I would have would be like king 10 or 10 nine of clubs, and ultimately says that he doesn't think I have many bluffs. And at the end of the day, he tank folds. Ace six of diamonds face up. What, dude? You just fold the trips to my crazy ass? No way, man. Incredible fold by him. I really didn't think people in this player pool would be able to fold trips. I certainly wouldn't have, but didn't get any value. Nice hand to him, and we end up battling a lot. His name's David, goes by amateur backwards, but still sick fold to him, and you'll be seeing more hands with him later on in this video. After not getting paid, I pick up another premium pocket aces in the low jack. Blinds have increased, and I raise it up to 2600 And you know what's really cool when you pick up aces is that someone raises over you. The player to my left immediately three bets to 6900 and action folds to me. This is quite the dream, and we're also playing pretty deep against this player, about eighty to 90000 effective. So I'm obviously trying to get more in the middle. I'm out of position and incentivized to put in another raise, so I size up to 20000 here out of position. Don't think that this is the player type that would three bet lights and he thinks about it and ends up calling. So we're going out of position to a four bet pot and the flop is queen jack high. Ooh, out of position here. I hate this spot. 
I think it's a live exploit here that most players are only going to be three betting really strong premiums like high pocket pairs. And the issue with this flop is that two of them just improved to sets. So I decided to check this one. As strong as aces are, given the dynamics, I decided to check and he bets out 22,000. Well, it's not like I'm checking to fold, obviously with aces, but I don't really feel comfortable about this situation. He can easily have me beat with just a set. So I make the call and pray I'm ahead. We're going to a turn which comes a seven, I'm gonna check and play in flow, and this player snap checks it back, so now I'm feeling really good about my hand. We're off to a river which comes an inconsequential brick, and now do I think I can lead small? Unsure about it, but I decided to just check this one. He snap checks it back again with ace king. So I got the max by checking on the flop. Unsure if he would have called a flop bet, probably would have with two over cards and a gut shot straight draws, but here it is. Aces into ace king, and it's a nice life to continually chipping up, crossing that 200,000 mark. If we can crack ace king with aces, why not try our luck with ace king ourselves? I'm in the big blind with the cutoff raising to 2,500 off of a pretty short stack. The button now three bets to 7,000 on a larger stack of about 80,000 much higher than the average chip stack right now. And when the small blind folds, wow, facing this action with ace king off suits, uh, I think I could jam or four bet small. And I think both options are pretty good so far. And I decided on a smaller re-raise here out of position. I size to 20,000. The cutoff small stack decides to fold and now onto the button player who takes his time. And ultimately, after a minute or two of deliberation, he announces all in. Yep, a five bet jam, a re 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 raise of 84,000 total. This is pretty massive. Average stack, like I said, is only 60,000, and I have 220,000 in stacks. So I'm a 4x starting stack. Is this hand really worth the gamble here and risk to call off? Look, I'm basically only calling to hope that we're flipping, and if we're flipping, it's for a lot of chips while we're early on in this tournament. Or a lot of the time, five bet ranges are really narrow, and I could easily be dominated and lose. So I don't think it's worth the gamble here at this early stage of the tournament. I hate folding ace-king preflop, and unfortunately, I just decide to let it go. Pretty rare sight to see from me, honestly, folding ace-king. Maybe it's a nitty fold, but I can serve 64,000 and keep it in my stack. Just let it go and move on. After the break, it is announced that 66 players will get paid in first place of a whopping $87,000. We're getting into the mix into level 12. I have ace queen off suit in the cutoff and my hijack to my right raises to 6,500. Here, ace queen, pretty good hand and considering we're off suit, I lean more towards being aggressive. I three bet to 16,000 and action folds to him. He makes the call with a pretty short stack. We're off to a flop of 10 6 6 rainbow, and he checks it over to me. I decide to bet out 10,000, and for 10,000 here with ace queen high, he makes the call. Oh, also, did I remind you that this is the player that folded ace six to me? So, definitely a good player. His name's David, and we're gonna battle out a bunch here. And when the turn is the king of clubs, brings in a backdoor flush draw, and he checks. And in my perspective, he looks like he has about 70,000 in stack. So, a little bit more than the pot. And I think with the run out here, with some blockers of really strong hands on this board, and considering my range could consist of a lot of king X and top pair holdings, I announce. All in. My all in will put a lot of pressure and fold out a lot of hands that will fold, including hands like 10x, pocket nines, pocket eights, seven, so on and so forth. But it doesn't happen. He snap calls with aces. Yep. I'm sitting with only four outs and the river is a queen. Wow, so close. So hit paint, but just wasn't a jack. And even worse news upon my all in, he actually had a lot more than I thought. He had a bunch of black chips and they added up to 94,000. I pay him a massive chunk and lose a massive pot to this player. Gotta give kudos to him if he's folding when he's beat and he's getting jammed into when he's way ahead. Hello. Oh my god, good news, bad news, not much time to speak, I'm out of breath. I lost my phone because I'm an idiot. 
during dinner break. So here's an actual, we're on break right now. I ran to the car, turns out I just left my phone, my recording vlog phone in the car, because I'm a donk. Good news, I have my phone and I was kind of sweating it the whole time playing those last three levels. So I have it on the 15 minute break. These parking garages are so far away. I have to dr run all the way back to the poker room. But bad news is that my chip stack's down. It's not horrible, but ace queen hand didn't work out. I looked at my phone, ran the hand, and uh, essentially there, there are some things I did well in that hand, some things I did poorly. The jam was actually good on the turn. The pre-flop action, three betting was bad. Turns out I'm supposed to just make the call there because I don't really know, have everything figured out. But I still have like 30 big blinds going into the next level. Closer to 40, 35 bigs actually. So I have plenty of life. It's just that we were in such amazing shape. <sighs> So there's that, good news, bad news. Mid-session update, out of breath. I have five minutes left to get back to the poker room, which I will now get there with my phone, which is amazing. Just want some more chips and um, we'll just keep on playing poker, play my game. It's relatively high variance and very aggressive, but there are 120 players left, give or take. 66 make the money, so time to battle out 30 big lines. Let's try to sun run again after giving away a bunch of chips. My stack is down to about 140,000, and after break and being card dead, we've got 99 players left. In this hand, in level 14, there's a plus one open to 28,000 with about 8,000 behind. Action folds around to me in the big blind with king 10 off suit. Ah, such an annoying spot. This player has about nine big blinds total, essentially all in. So, I don't know. I'm here to gamble. I've been card dead. Haven't played a hand in a level or two. So I jam and he calls and bad news. He has ace king. So I'm totally dominated. The flop gives me some hope with a gut shot straight draw, but I do not end up improving and I double up this opponent. Such an annoying spot to lose this all in against the real short stack. And now I'm down to about a hundred thousand in chips. Gonna need a rebound. I have 25 big blinds in a dream, and that dream is so alive when I peel pocket aces out of the cutoff. There's an only gun player who opens for 40,000. Pretty interesting spot as he leaves himself with only 25,000 behind. Action folds to me, and I really want to try to incentivize one of the other players left to act to be in here as well. So instead of trying to isolate and move all in, I decided on just a call. But sadly, this plan doesn't work out as no one else is in. So we're just going heads up to a flop. But before the flop's in, the unknown player goes all in in the dark for his remaining 25,000. And obviously, I, you know, aces, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely in here. I make the call and we're up against ace queen. And it doesn't even matter. Aces definitely dominates ace queen as we have seen from maybe a hand or two prior. Aces will win. I finally win a pot again and things are going just a little bit back into the right direction. The following hand, we battle our buddy David out of the small blind again. He's to my right and action folds to him and he raises to 12,000. I look down at queen seven offsuit in the big blind and I think this is a decent candidate to defend and battle against. I'm always happy to play against some solid competition. He is certainly one of those players. So I make the call and see a flop of 8-5 deuce to clubs. He starts with a check here and now on this board texture with queen high. Uh, I'm just going to blast because I like being aggressive. So I bet out 20,000 and for 20,000 here, he decides on a call. So... Gonna get a little dicey, and when the turn is the jack of hearts, he checks for a second time, and I decide on a bet of 26,000. Honestly, I don't think this is the best play or best bet in the world. To be honest with you, in the moment, it's not well thought out, because I have queen seven, and I'm just trying to bet to win. Anyways, uh, he makes the call, and I have a whole lot of nothing, so I'm pretty uncomfortable in this spot. Oh god. How am I going to get out of this one? The river comes the four of hearts. So six, seven gets there with a straight and he checks again for a third time. What do I do with queen seven off suit here on this board? Do I give up? Do I go for it? There's about 110,000 in the middle and what's the sizing that I should go with? Ultimately, I end up thinking I'm all in. Gotta maximize fold equity. We are relatively close to the money and it's really nerve wracking to go all in with queen high as a bluff, especially over betting the size of the pots. But I think I just have to pull the trigger here, sacrifice my tournament life because I'm not here just to make the money. I'm here to win the damn thing and you gotta have chips to do so. I pull the trigger, announce it. I am all in. And this player asks for a count. 
He counts it out and it's 143,000 total. This is a massive all in at this stage of the tournament. He covers me. So if he somehow makes the call, I am out of the tournament and my last couple hours worth of work will amount to nothing. But he thinks about it, tanks it over and talks through his thought process again, as he usually would. We've seen him do it when I had a full house and now I have nothing. Throughout his tanking, he announces his hand of 3-4. He says he loses to bluffs like 6-4 and that might go for it. And he takes his time and he's really considering calling with a pair of fours. He was open it on the flop and ended up hitting a pretty bad pair. But the fact that he's thinking about it for this long, two to three minutes in, shows how much of a read he has on me. Ultimately, he ends up folding. Thank God. My goodness, I was sweating that out so hard, screaming fold in my head. And after a long tank, he does. Still got to give him props for trying to read the situation as right as possible. This fold only works against some really good players, and he's certainly one of them. Happy to win this one, and that was quite a sweat that our buddy gave us here. So I just realized I probably didn't show you guys this beautiful room yet. And we're super deep in this tournament. We're on break right now, but look at this. We're in this massive theater and it's so sick. Like probably the, this is actually the coolest venue I've ever played in because um, apparently during the WSP, uh, the main event, there's these like railings and seats. This gets filled because people play on stage and I'm sure they televise it or do something on the TVs too. I don't know. Um, this is by far the coolest place I've ever been in here at Cherokee, the tournament room. Apparently this is the last year that this room is going to be used because they have a new poker room for tournaments. Um, we're on break right now. Found a way to claw back, which is really nice. The bluff was unneeded. I'll be very honest, very frank. Uh, did not need to bluff the queen seven, but I'm glad it worked out. And I have almost 300k, 297,000 in stack to be exact. And there are six players left to make the money. We have three more levels of play here in day one, and it's been a roller coaster ride. I my stack is basically at what it was like after 40 minutes of playing this tournament. It was incredible how much I ran up my stack um, after the first break. But things are going well here. We're in a 15 minute break. We're chilling, three more levels of play, three more levels of 40 minutes, and then we're calling it a wrap. We should, yeah. We will make the money by then and um, play it for day two. So a lot of poker on this trip because tomorrow is also the start of the uh, circuit main event. And if we run deep here, then we won't be able to play the main event and what, vice versa. But regardless, a, a full day of poker tomorrow for sure. And uh, I'm ready. I'm ready to grind. The table's been pretty tough. The guy to my right, the guy I've been battling with is, is just a crusher and uh, almost soul owned me by calling with just a pair of fours. But that's it. Wish us luck. Three more levels. Let's grind it up. Build a chip stacker. Honestly, I'm happy with staying even because I'm almost 2x average stack. So I'm doing well. Just uh, just keep on playing well and uh, let's grind it out. So chipping up to over 260,000 now with 72 players left after break. We're on to level 16 and we have King 10 offsuit under the gun and I raise it up to 15,000. Action folds around to the small blind player and he makes the call. He's been rather tight so far, but we're going to a flop of 973 to clubs. He checks it over to me, and at this stage, we are five players left for making the money. The plan is to just apply a lot of ICM pressure here and go for it. So I bet out 24,000, and it seems like he doesn't give a crap about ICM. He makes the call, and trying to improve here, the turn is a six. He checks here, and I have a gut shot straight draw now, so hopefully I can hit something here. I'm going to check back and see a river 10. So any eight makes the straight, and I actually end up with top pair. This player bets out 25,000, which is a pretty small bet, a little annoying. I don't expect to win a lot of the time, but I'm not going to fold here in this spot. So fine, I make the call, and he shows us pocket eights. Ah, nice hand to him. Unfortunate that my stack takes a hit, but shortly after this hand, luckily, we are now officially in the money with 66 players left. I have a little over 200,000 in chips and it's time to bank. Unfortunately, after we make the money, I go card dead for two plus levels. Almost two hours of card death happens. And my chip stack has crippled down to 150,000, give or take. And now I pick up a nice one with ace king of clubs on the button. A little too good to go all in. And when action folds to me, I raise it up to 25,000 and the big blind decides to call. So playing button versus big blind here. The flop comes pretty good for me. It's king, eight, three, two diamonds. 
He checks it over to me and I'm trying to milk him as much as possible here in this hand. I bet out a small, measly amount of 12,000 and it's tiny and he obliges with the call. So more chips hopefully coming to my direction. When the turn is a nine now, he checks for a second time and I just want to set up a river all in with top pair, top kicker. So I decided to bet out 35,000 now, but sadly he folds. Anyways, I'm not complaining as it's crucial to chip up at this point after being car dead for more than two levels. Now we have 200,000 in chips before the blinds come. So after a super long day of poker, it only makes sense to just sit down and relax on a lovely beanbag chair that I just got. Anyways, uh, it's nice to make the money after the end of day one. I ended up bagging a pretty small amount, 150,000. Comparative to the field, it's a pretty small stack, but you never know what could happen. And uh, you know, maybe, oh God, maybe it's a spoiler because there's a part two coming on Thursday. Sorry about the, the two part videos, just a, a longer video that's gonna happen on Thursday. Maybe a little bit of a spoiler, but even with my short stack, maybe I run it up. Maybe I don't, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> if you follow me on Instagram, you probably knew real time. But thank you so much for tuning into this video. Part two is coming out pretty soon and uh, some good things happen. Uh, there's 87,000 up top for first place, but I gotta need some run good and a few double ups to get there, which may or may not happen. Who knows, but thank you so much for sticking to the end. It was a long day of poker. It's nice to cash the first event here and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for sticking to the end, peace.